Hi everyone, Alex here. Just a quick warning ahead of today's episode. This is the first of the episodes we recorded remotely once lockdown began, and unfortunately Bryn's setup had a bit of a problem during recording that we only discovered after the session, meaning that for the next couple of episodes his audio quality will be a little worse than normal. Our editors have worked hard to clean it up and make it a bit more intelligible, and we were able to repair the fault for later recordings, but you will just need to bear with us for the next couple of episodes. As always, thanks for your time, we hope you're all happy and healthy, and we hope you enjoy today's episode. Hello and welcome to the Rusty Quill Gaming Podcast, episode 158. I'm your host and GM, Alex Newell. With me today, I have... Ben Meredith, Bryn Monroe, Lydia Nicholas, and Helen Gould. And who are you playing? Zolf Smith. Hamid Salaharun Al-Tahan. Sal Sidebottom. And Azu. Okay, we did it, we did it, we did it. So, did it. Uh, for listeners, Alex is real bad at intros in the new system. <laughs> So, for everyone, this is us recording remotely. This is the first of our attempts where we're basically recording main campaign, but we're doing so from separate locations. Seems to be working. We've done our tests. How are people feeling about it? Um, I'm actually inside your house, Alex. (laughs) That would make life so much easier. (laughs) Like, that would just make life so much easier. Hiding. If everyone wants to move into my loft, you just just say, okay? Secret. I I do not want to move into your loft. (laughs) Just to get that out there. I mean, the, the commuting is a lot easier. <laughs> that is true. That is true. My bed is literally just behind this wall. I mean, I think I can reach my bed from here <laughs> quite, if I leaned harder. Recording from your bed with the covers over, like up to your chin, is forbidden. That is a that is a hard rule we're going to set now. That's a. I could, I could put a duvet over me, Alex. Think think how oh, good the over, sound quality fine. would be. <laughs> So I do ask our listeners like to bear with us and so on. You might notice like the energy is a little bit different and maybe the recording quality might have changed. It should be like fine, but just bear with us as we all get used to the to the new system. With that in mind, I should probably recap where we've been because it has been so long. Oh god. It has been so long Ages. since we've recorded. Two thousand years. <laughs> Alex built a time machine just so we could go back and record the side quest, which just aired. And then oh, and yeah. back, it's been 2,000 years it's, since we last recorded. It's true, it has. It's been at least 2,000 years. So in terms of what has happened in this timeline, a sentence I never wanted to say in a recording. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, Sasha's letter was read. Zolf had a chat with Azu where Azu laid down some like hardcore Aphrodite counselling. That went quite well. <laughs> It was definitely softcore. It was definitely softcore, Aphrodite. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Then, I, I'll be honest, most of the last episode was us discussing increasingly ludicrous ways to travel a large distance. Uh, none of them were ludicrous. Uh, <laughs> all of them were completely within my capabilities. <laughs> we ended up finishing with Cell returning to a village that was still there. Yay! With people having a fun party because the rain ended. Because I am a benevolent god who gives only good things to those who Oof. wait. Oh, such lies. Such (laughs) lies. You're only getting away with this because I'm not there and I can't (laughs) tap you with this pencil. No one can hit me. It's wonderful. (laughs) So what I am going to suggest we do is that we pick up probably the next day. So the fate having sort of played itself out a little bit and for people to have had a bit of decompressed time and also, frankly, to give Wild a moment to start doing research. But what I'm going to be doing is asking people, assuming that you are just... Obviously, you're all tied to the inn to a degree, but with 24 hours, I'm going to go around and ask what people are doing, mm-hmm. and then I'm going to end up by asking Cell whether you're returning to the inn, like what's going on there, okay? So first things first, Helen. Azu has 24 hours at the inn. What's the plan? Azu is going to be trying to be calm and quiet and a reassuring presence. <laughs> <laughs> are you doing that in the way that's genuinely helpful, where it's like, hey guys, if anyone needs anything, I'm here? Or is that going to be the thing where you stand just a little bit too close to people going, you okay? Are, are you okay? Are you okay? You're still okay? No, are you no, okay? no, she's learned, she's learned her lesson about that since talking to Wild, and Wild pretty definitely being like, no, leave me alone! <laughs> so, okay. I think she's a, like a pleasant lurking. <laughs> so, <laughs> as, as it was pleasantly lurking, understood. <laughs> lurking with intent. Yes, just being just Lurking being with quite intent visibly and to solidly. make happy. Yes. And just like I'm here, I'm around, I have I have ears. <laughs> little, little pointy ones. Yes. Yeah. And maybe she does a little has a little like ride on the beach with Topaz. Yeah, sure. Okay, cool. In that case then, Hamid, same question. Hamid is probably still 
pursuing his campaign to um, halflingize himself in front of the kobolds rather than being some sort of distant, you know, weird, powerful creature. He wants them to see him as a person. Can I get you to give me a perform check, please? Perform? <laughs> Not <laughs> yep, diplomacy. No, 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 no. Talking to them will just make it worse. You just have to perform normal to the best of your abilities. That's a shame. Oh, that's relatable. <laughs> my, Sometimes my, my talking only, isn't point, the solution. My only point in perform is drama. Oh, drama's probably not going to help you in this one. It's the do, opposite do, of what you well, want, exactly. if anything. Do, do, do you remember the time I tried to make a dramatic entrance in the opera scene and you yes. made me roll perform drama? He now has a point in that. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll roll without that extra plus Noted. One. Noted. 13. 13. You do no damage. <laughs> and if that isn't winning, I don't know what is. Hamid also wants to be productive, so the other thing he will start to do is to create cold weather gear for the gang. Oh my gosh, we with your point container. don't have any cold weather gear. We do have a bit of hot weather gear for some unknown reason. But assuming wait, wait. he can find any level of materials at all or repurpose them, he'll start to create cold weather gear for people. Wait, did we definitively decide on the polar option? No, but we're going to Svalbard, which is no, inside cold. the Arctic Circle. <laughs> I mean... It's going to get cold at some point regardless. <laughs> like, I mean, I guess we don't... I don't even know what season it will be at, in Svalbard, so it might not be too cold, but there's a chance it will be cold and it won't hurt. We, and, you Take- know, we've got Endure Elements, so we may not need it regardless, but... It won't hurt, basically, and it gives him something to do that might be useful. An endure tailoring. element is not stylish. <laughs> tailoring takes a while for obvious yeah. reasons. He's assuming we're not leaving anytime soon. <laughs> Thankfully, because of the nature of this climate, there are some furs kicking around at the inn that you can retrofit. It takes a little bit... I forget, do you speak Japanese? No. I have comprehend languages, so I can cast the spell which will let me understand other people, but gotcha. does not allow me to talk Japanese back to them. There is a brief little miscommunication where the innkeeper is just convinced that you're saying you're cold and keeps bringing you blankets, but eventually some communication happens and you're allowed to retrofit a few furs that are kicking around the place. Cool. Do you want me to make a profession tailor check? You know what? Yes. I was going to say no, we'll wait to see if you get attacked, but you... you... Nah, go on. <laughs> you're fine. 20 total. 20 total. You managed to make a... Who do you want to start making stuff for? Yourself or other people? And if other people, who? I'd probably start with Azzy. Not to play favourites or anything. (laughs) Pick a piece of clothing that you are going to attempt to make. A big fluffy jacket with a hood. Big fluffy jacket. She doesn't have any hair. Her head might get cold. That's true. I need to ask another arbitrary detail. Is uh, is this to be intended to worn over the armour or under the armour or not with armour at all? Over the armour. Okay. You proceed to make... Which is a terrible not... idea, actually, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think Hamid's worked that out. He's never really been to cold places. He's not an armour guy. When was the last time Hamid <laughs> wore armour? Fresh and Taylor helps him make it. It doesn't help him understand the principles of insulation. <laughs> so the good news and bad news is, the good news is you have made the single biggest parker that has ever been constructed. <laughs> <laughs> and it, for what it's worth, it looks like it's probably going to fit Azu and it's going to be the right size. The negative is you have used all of your materials that you set aside for four people on Azu's one enormous parka. It's, she basically will be walking around wearing the best part of a full rug. <laughs> Do you know what? Like proper like ice climber style. That sounds about right. But it'll do the job. I'll give you that. You is know this, it'll uh, do the job. Are you going to give this to Azu or is it going to be a surprise? Oh, no, I'll, I'll definitely give it to Azu at some point, yeah. Aww. I, well, this probably happens a couple of days later. It probably doesn't happen instantly. I don't know. I'll let, I'll sure, let sure. Alex tell me when I can actually give it to you. In which case, Zolf, you're up. You have 24 hours before like things progress. Is there anything else that you wanted to be doing during a little bit of downtime? Being outside and alone. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. One question because of the nature of your character, is this being used in anything approaching, like, spiritual contemplation with the powers that be or anything like that? I mean, introspection, but given the nature of my powers, I don't think there's anything to contemplate to, as it were. That's kind of what I meant, is you weren't reaching out, you were just, like... No, because I'm, I'm, my, my power is internal, so yeah. I have no reason to reach out. Yeah, that's fine, that's fine. In which case, then, that leaves me to sell. Your fate went real, real well. Everyone was super chill and happy. And 
All I need to know is, I'm assuming that you tell them the whole show-in thing is dealt with? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I think wins a cuddly toy. Uh, I can I can roll for success at knocking down coconuts, if you want. And no, I'm going to say that you will succeed. Can you roll for scale of cuddly toy? <laughs> okay, I do actually have some dice. Where 20 is actively problematic, yep. and one is keychain. Oh, two! So. <laughs> okay, so it's a little dinkly one. Little uh, dinkly yeah. one. What's it could toy of, most importantly? It is a red panda. Yeah. A re- oh, Aww. nice! Yeah. Yeah. So, we're going to say that your fate lasted into the night and that you're up the next day. I need to know, are you returning to the inn to reconvene with people or not? No, they'll stay in their shop. They'll stay overnight there. Need to be summoned, I think. They're going to enjoy being at home. That's That's fine. Okay, cool. In which case, then... I am going to say that you have the evening of the fate. You have a full day of lurking with intent to love, <laughs> sewing, mulling, and basically catching up, let's be honest, from Cell's side of things. So a full 24-hour cycle of that. And then the day after that, Wild sort of asks everyone into his office, the core party to be specific, when you all have a moment. I'm assuming you do. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yep. And okay. I suppose Cell will come then if they're specifically asked. He wouldn't have called for you yet. Okay. Bye so bye. it'll be the people who are immediately there. I'm just going to mime all the things I'll be doing while you have your deep chat. <laughs> <laughs> so, how is everyone feeling? Um, Fine. Good as can be expected, I suppose. Yes. As always, mixed news. I think I've managed to track down Earhart. Good. And... She seems close enough that we can probably pursue that as an avenue. So what's the bad news then? Things to be aware of. Einstein's currently off the grid. Not necessarily an unusual thing. It's happened before, but just so you know. Off the grid as in no one knows where he is? The problem we're at is that off the grid in that no one knows where he is, but sometimes that's intentional and sometimes it's not, and it's really difficult to tell which it is at any time. Oh, Let's just say that he's off the table as a player for the foreseeable. Okay. I've also been warned that although Earhart might be an avenue, there might be some work at our end to get um, to get her ship shape, should we say. She's injured? I don't know. I know that her vessel was damaged. Oh dear. She's injured. I am assuming she's injured. However, I've been told that she should still be capable of uh, making a journey of this calibre. But unfortunately, what that does mean is that we are going to have to head to her. She is not going to be coming to us. Where is she? As far as I'm aware, she's currently in Hiroshima, which would make sense. It's a a major aeroport. It makes sense that she would end up there, but we're going to have to get there ourselves. I'm not especially worried about the transport, but here we are. All right, well, I'll start packing then. We'll move in as soon as possible, right? Ideally, yes. All right. I need to ask, did anyone confirm with Cell whether Cell was willing to stick with us? I'd prefer them to if they would. They, they offered to, yeah, keep travelling with us and to keep helping. In that case, then, I'd ask one of you to request their presence. I'll uh, go. I'm, I'm happy to go and visit them. Do we think it'd be better if it was just one of us or all three of us? I leave it to your good judgement. I'm going to be speaking with Barnes in terms of chartering a vessel towards Sakaiminato. Realistically, I'm looking to set forth tomorrow, if possible. I'll be coming with. We're, at this stage, it seems sensible to shelve the inn as a uh, an HQ. Are Barnes and Carter coming with us? Potentially. Okay. There are a few things I would like to pursue a little further before I can make that call. They'll certainly be travelling with us as far as Hiroshima. And how far is that away from here? We're looking at a, a gentle day's sailing towards the port and then a few days travel by horse. That sounds quite nice. I believe I've managed to find us a route that should avoid any major urban centres. It should be a ride in the country, but when has it ever been? There's there's always time for things to be nice. Here's hoping. Well, in that case, then, I have a number of arrangements to make. If we could make sure that Cell is uh, present at the inn at first light tomorrow, we can begin the journey if that's applicable for everyone. Yeah, I'll keep packing up here if you two want to go and get him. Thank you. Okay, Zolf. Wild gestures for you to sort of head out and then returns to his his enormous mounds of paperwork. I'll head out. He's such a projection of you. (laughs) No, he's not. Wild's really helpful. (laughs) 
I'm all of his worst traits with none of the positive ones. <laughs> Who is heading to sell then? Sounds like Hamid and Azzy. Probably, though, all the kobolds as well. Oh. Because remember, one of the suggestions was that all the non Skrark kobolds potentially stay in Sales Village and help out yeah. Jasper. Yeah, they are all going to be coming with you. That's true. Okay, how many kobolds are there again? There's Skrark and then there's six others. A small platoon. <laughs> okay. Just a, an itty bitty little platoon. They'll hardly notice they're there. That, that's too many to have on Topaz, it sounds like. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just hammered, and then a stack of kobolds on top. <laughs> is anyone else getting a bit of a Prince Ali? <laughs> I mean, remember that the kobolds very much made friends with Cell as well. Yeah, they did. Like, yeah. Cell had been reaching out to them. They'd been working with them. You know, Cell wasn't a terrifying despot. Of course, they got along with Cell. Well, exactly. <laughs> In which case, then I am going to jump to all of you arriving at the village. I'll probably explain at some point. I'll take Skrark aside and explain our vague itinerary to them. Just, you know, kind of like, we'll we'll go on a boat for a couple of days, we'll cross to the other side of the mainland for another day, and then we're going to get on an airship and travel halfway across the world. You know, this is what we're facing. Skrark is customarily unforthcoming, with the exception of there's... You get the impression that if Skrark had eyebrows, he would have raised them at the idea of an airship. I am going to jump to, it is, it's about 3pm, give or take, because you were speaking with Wild at first light, and the time it'll take you gets the stuff together and then head over at a normal pace, not a frog march. You get there about 3pm. In terms of the village itself, it has become a bit of a hive of activity. Everyone has been putting off a lot of stuff due to the show-in situation and the weather. When was the last time people got to plough a field properly or set up a paddy and things like that? So as a result, everyone, it, it's kind of like that spring cleaning vibe where all the doors are open and everyone's getting there making hay while the sun shines kind of thing so it's quite busy with a lot of activity and like people are hammering and woodwork and farming and everyone's kind of going at it really yep. I'm, I'm going to say that there's a little group of gnomes playing some music and then there's an amplification device that Cell and Jasper have put together which means that the entire village is kind of you know working together cleaning, stripping stuff out, like all stuff that has been sodden for a long time needs to be kind of replaced and rebuilt. There's people like they're they're planting things in the in the soil in, in time with the music kind of thing. It's <laughs> it is a vibe. You're you're all mashing with my musicals now though, because what I have is Prince Ali is coming over the over the hilltop and the first thing that they hear no, is No, it's a world building kind of song. Yeah. <laughs> I not... was thinking hi ho too. Yeah, it's, it's one of those kind of world-building songs where people are like, oh, down in the village, we're doing this, and it's great, blah, blah. This character is moving through. They have these attributes. You know. <laughs> that sort of song, the sort of thing that is played by some gnomes on a little stage, amplified through the thing. Everyone's having a lovely time. Agreed, agreed. Yeah. You all convene in the square, surrounded by a bunch of villagers who are suddenly acting as if they didn't work on that choreography for months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a bit once more with feeling, kind of like yeah, <laughs> they got the mustard, but it's yeah, they got the black mold out, that kind of thing, you know. As we'll make a comment to Hamid about, see, things can be nice. This is nice. I agree. Yeah, it's lovely. <laughs> Ham Hamid is smiley and wavy at everyone. Yay. <laughs> I guess we go to Sal's shop yep. and knock on the door. Hey, buddies, how you doing? Hi, Sal, it's so good to see you. It's yeah. So, everything looks so great. I'm so glad they've done so well. It's lovely, isn't it? So the, the people who are playing, that is uh, Gypsum and Jumper and That's Carly. That's so talented. As well. I'm really yes. impressed. I know. And the, the amplification device, like I gave him some tips, but this is actually Jasper's doing. Jasper, oh, come over here. Oh, is, is Jasper here? Hi, Jasper. Uh, Jasper maybe takes a while to come, so Cell walks up behind the people that are playing the music and then just shouts, Jasper, to the shop! <laughs> Jasper kind of pokes over with a hay bale that is far, far too large for him, sort of coming over and... Hey. Hey, I just wanted... Everyone's to, looking I, good. I just wanted... The people said that the, the, the music was good, that everything was good. I thought that you should Everything's hear. been brilliant. Jasper, you, you did such a good job looking after this place. 
Oh yeah, thanks. The the um, the. the the amplification was uh, was tricky, but then we found some old uh, uh, casks, uh, and then we just retrofitted them. It was dead easy. Oh, uh, Jasper, I wanted to introduce you to to all my friends. Hamid will start introducing the kobolds to Jasper. I'm afraid that they have spread themselves out quite wide amongst the square already. Oh, fair enough. But um, they, they they kind of come scarfing over the second that you uh, jest them, and then they're, they're all stood to attention. They're they're kind of intense. Huh. Cell will rapidly translate between draconic and Japanese, which I assume is quite confusing for <laughs> people. <laughs> oh, actually, Azu would be the only person there that doesn't speak either. Like, she's fine with that. Yeah. She just sort of stands there and watches. She gets the gist of what's happening. She's like, well... I mean, it's, it's fairly straightforward because, bless him, J- Jasper immediately just resorts to, hello, uh... Tea, tea, and then immediately is is gesturing to the tea set that's on the porch. It's like tea, 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 as a solution to all of the problems. I think that once they start drinking tea, Cell is going to excitedly explain the workings of the amplification device to the kobolds and perhaps ask them if they have any ideas about how it could be improved. Okay, I'm going to skip to the end of that conversation with their suggestion mostly boils down to, tell you what, if you just kind of angled it a bit and used it as one big megaphone, you could all just get loads and loads of people yelling behind it and that'd be well loud. <laughs> <laughs> they, they seem to have got the idea that you want the loudest noise possible, not necessarily the idea that there might need to be a quality attached to that in any way. I just remember that you said that they were all little like engineering prodigies and, and fancy. So, so their, de- their, their designs are great. They're, they're attempting to, to build overly complex bridges here. Uh, <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> hey, it totally works. It's just the, the conversation diverted initially because they were focusing mostly on, well, if you want something loud, just blow something up. But eventually you managed to, to get across the stuff that they were talking about. But yeah, I am going to accelerate past two. They all actually just start making their own amplification stuff. It's a little workshop. Well, while that's going on, as I was going to say, so we think we found a way to travel to Svalbard. Oh, really? Uh, I, I've been working on some stuff. Have you, did you, just, you know, I know we might be thinking the same thing, but borrow through the centre of the earth? Borrow through the centre uh, of the earth? You mean? No, the thinking? opposite, actually. Oh, if go you into wanted space? To, I've always thought. N- no, if you wanted to come with us, you could, be are an airship, so flying through clouds. We and, have a, 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 f- a friend, a, a friend, a, a member of the, the, the Harlequins, Amelia Earhart. She, she, she is the. Is Harlequin the supposed to mean something for me? I, my English oh, it's, is it's still a little. It's the organisation that that Wild is working. Well, working with, I guess, not necessarily directly for. Some of the relationships are a bit complicated, actually. Earhart and Wild have a bit of a history that they don't necessarily get on. But anyway, the point is, is that we think that. Big mood, brother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the people we've been working with, you know, have a. a they have connections, and and we think that Captain Earhart is, is going to be able to get us there. She has an airship. It's in uh, Hi- Hiroshima. Is that what that's what Wild said? Um, yes, he said it was a big aeroport. Yeah, I, I think that's one of one of the cities on the the mainland, uh, and, yeah. and we think that that Earhart will be willing to to take us to Svalbard. Although he he also said we might have to help her repair her ship first. Oh, do, are there? Maybe a lot, a lot of repairs they need doing. I mean, we don't know at the, at, at the moment, basically. Complicated but... repairs. So, so the plan is to get to get a ship to the to the mainland, and then mm-hmm. we'd probably have to travel by horse a couple of days or something mm-hmm. to get to get to Hiroshima, and then mm-hmm. work on this airship and sail sail through the skies all the way to Svalbard. I, I, I guess. Grand. When do we leave? Uh, well, Wild wanted us to leave tomorrow morning. If if you could, could be ready in time, we'd, we'd really love to have you with us. If you're still happy to come now that you've seen your village, uh, yeah, and, and how well yeah. they're doing. I mean, I don't want to pressure you. If if you feel like you no. need to be here, we we um, respect that decision. But we we'd love to have you along. Cell looks at the village, and there's a slight kind of strain in their expression. But seeing everyone move around to the Disney music, let's be honest, <laughs> they they kind of take a moment. Yeah. Let's do this. That sounds fun. Let's. I think that that sounds like an entertaining and exciting and interesting and challenging uh, mission. Yes, we can do this. At which uh, point, there is an enormous roar, a huge, enormous roar. Okay, plans and changed. And I will take a break there. 
and welcome back. So, I believe I left you all with everything fine and a nice, simple roar echoing out across ha- Hammond, the uh, Hammond island. was halfway through throwing himself into a hug with Cell when he has to sort of catch it and be like, oh dear. <laughs> um, <laughs> Just does a pirouette. <laughs> yeah. there's, there's a moment of everyone goes very, very still in the village, and then you see a small cobbled head poke over what you thought was a pile of barrels, and now very much is not, <laughs> and is the loudest noise the cobbles can now currently make. I need to know which kobold it is. You have their names, Bryn. It is Mick. Mick. Could you now please add the personality quirk likes loud noises to Mick? (laughs) Everyone, once they realise what that is, calm down and go about their day again. It was very loud. Hmm. Okay, right, cool. All right, that so plans can unchange. I know I said plans change. <laughs> uh, they can they can unchange back to the plan. And you know, in fact, if, if any of your cobbled friends uh, would like to stick around here, I can see that that actually works as a pretty a really interesting defensive mechanism. I would say so. Mm. I could. I could begins to say this in Draconic to the Cobbled. Mm. Ha- Hamid nods along enthusiastically, but will let you make the offer of, of having them stay, basically. Skrark takes a moment. Hmm. I think it's a sensible suggestion, but uh, I think they'll likely need to be forces from the island. Oh, okay. Uh, I just thought it might be something that they find fun. It, it wasn't a demand. I wouldn't ever make a demand of my new friends. It's tactically astute. Well, I just thought, you know, now that the, the, you guys are in charge of, the, you know, what, what was formerly the, the, the Institute, this village is quite close and you guys could, you know, have form a much better relationship than has existed in the past. And I just, you know, I think it'd be really useful for you guys to have contacts and, and stuff, I, I reckon. Mm. Scrock takes a moment and then has a hurried conversation with one of the other kobolds, and then that kobold bolts out of the village ludicrously quickly. <laughs> My expression mimics cells. Oh, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sending a runner to the island. Oh, I'm literally a runner. I, yeah, I respect that. But for now, our bodyguard detail, he looks at Hamid, will remain. Okay. Well, that's um, fine. <laughs> cool. In that case, then, does anyone have an issue with me accelerating to the morning of departure? Nope. Nope. Okay. Could everyone please give me a perception check? Okay. Natural 20. Natural 20. Nice. <laughs> Whoa, nice. 26. Oh, fine. <laughs> 28. Holy hell! I mean, my, my, my total is thirty-four, just just for the record. <laughs> I mean, I only rolled a fourteen. <laughs> I absolutely hate letting you guys like stack up to like it. it you know what it is? It's because you don't have more penalties than positives. <laughs> That's my bad. I can fix this. Well, in that case, I got thirty-one. I, for, I I just saw natural twenty. Didn't bother to add anything onto it. I mean, that was the, the correct perception. thing. Bryn just wanted to perception wave. <laughs> <laughs> just waving it all over everyone. Just, just wanted to get my big fat there. bonus just out on the table in front of everyone. <laughs> As the heavy dice lands with a thud. Um, right. So, in terms of things that you're all noticing, then is this is literally just a a, a, a glance at the squad that you're going to be setting off with. Barnes and Carter aren't there. But Wilde has said that they'll be waiting at the fishing vessel that they've managed to get hold of to transport to the mainland. Obviously, there's no horses and so on because the journey isn't that far at this end towards the vessel. Other things to note, everyone actually got high enough. It's been a while, so I'll mention it again. Wilde is still wearing some sort of manacles around his feet. Oh, no. I mean, surely he wouldn't need very high perception to notice Not chained. Well, you say that, so he uh, he's... As he's sort of like faffing around and it's kind of reminded, it's you know, it's he's been wearing clothes that can best be described as starting to approach bell bottoms. <laughs> oh my god, wild and flares. Basically, yeah. But he is still wearing those anti magic manacles. Other things to bear in mind are the uh cobalt have all returned up to full like squad, the runner has returned. They must be able to cover long distances real well. Mm. But they are up to full capacity. Wild himself is he looks practical in a way that I don't think anyone apart from Zolf would have seen before. He has a backpack. It's weird. 
and like he's wearing a, a wide brimmed hat but it might actually be just because it's quite sunny not to make a point there's not even a feather in it other things to note is the inn is you notice that the village itself surrounding the inn there are a few new faces kicking around they're not literally going into the inn or anything like that at this stage but you Zolf specifically are used to this being a ghost town and who knows why maybe word got out or something but a couple of people have started to sort of set up shop in houses that have been left empty for months with that in mind while takes a moment has a look at the inn turns around everyone got everything they need yep yes you look very prepared i mean yes <laughs> just, just just saying just wild starts walking towards the coast follow wild as who feels embarrassed <laughs> yeah he'll do that i'm sorry <laughs> so if you all start heading off then it is a comparatively similar walk to the one that you made to the uh, island though it's not exactly the same route and in about half a day I'd say you make it towards the coast and on the actual coast proper there is a fishing vessel just off the beach it is a beach down to it so there isn't like a dock or anything and it is going to be a sort of wading through the water to get onto it but you can see Barnes and Carter on a probably one of the biggest fishing vessels of the island are just there out giving a sort of signal wave to you all as it waves back Wild sort of hoiks his backpack over his head and starts wading out to the to the vessel. I'm assuming you all do the same. I might sort of try and give as many small members of the party a hand because if it's going to be wading, then they might quite quickly be up to their necks. Reverse pyramid. Yeah, that thing where someone's on a motorbike <clears throat> and everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'll cast fly on myself probably if I don't. Think, oh, okay. If it's fine. too deep for me to wade, at least. It. It is. I'm afraid for anyone who is below, like, medium yeah. height, you, you're going to be doing a little bit of a swim, I guess. What's uh, medium height? I'm afraid Zolf would currently be looking at a little bit of a swim unless you use your levitation. Yeah. You, your... I was going to say your halberd. You're not using a halberd. It's a glaive, right? Yeah. Yeah. Your glaive is of sufficient length that you can punt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so to everyone else's eyes, you're... I suppose you're riding an invisible gondola towards the ship <laughs> now I think about that look. <laughs> Amazing. Wonder uh, Woman has an invisible plane. Zolf has an invisible gondola. <laughs> I don't know what the details are for when one uses a transform spell and then is carrying stuff. So It gets absorbed into you. It gets absorbed into you. Okay, well yep. then Cell's going to be a dolphin. Although there's a weird little clarification, I think, in an obscure corner of Pathfinder, which is if you're carrying more than your carry capacity in your transform... The spare bits just kind of go thump and drop beside you. Well, Cell's got a bag of holding. I think they were given yeah. a bag. Yeah, of I think you're fine. So, I think you're uh, fine. Yeah, Cell's going to be a dolphin and is going to occasionally uh, leap over the party in a graceful lot. <laughs> I'll ferry the kobolds one by one in the air. Oh, Azu doesn't get to help anyone. Yeah, the ones that can't fit on Azu. For once, the kobolds that are going to get shuttled comply. <laughs> oh, apart from Skrark, sorry. Yeah, Skrark that's, swimming. That's fair. Interestingly, they swim the way that... Have you ever seen, like, larger lizards swim, where they do the kind of use their tail as a propeller kind of dealy? Like a crocodile. It's quite cool. Anyway, you'll get aboard the vessel. Barnes and Carter are there. There's no fishermen on the vessel, but they immediately set off. It is a sailing ship, to be clear. Barnes is under the impression that it'll take about probably the rest of the day and you'll be getting into port at night. And Wild lets you all know that there should be all going well, some horses waiting for you at the drop-off point, so you can immediately press on after a, maybe a short rest. But he advises you all to take a rest whilst you're on the vessel. Okay. Anyone want to do any RPing or anything other than chill on the vessel before you get there? I look distinctly uncomfortable for the entire journey. Understood. Okay. It's like going back to the place your ex works, isn't it? <laughs> Except that ex could kill me. Yeah. And everyone else. Yep. No spontaneous storms spring up around the vessel focused entirely on Zolf as much as I want to. <laughs> and I really, really do want to. That doesn't happen. Well, it would be Aphrodite versus Poseidon, wouldn't it? So, personally, I think Aphrodite would win. I, you're in his house, unfortunately. <laughs> Aphrodite doesn't care about that. <laughs> She'll go to anyone's house. I, 
I love the way you're describing it. Makes <laughs> makes um, Poseidon a little bit more like the Godfather. You come into my ocean. I mean, and you tell it's, me it's, how to treat my people. It's the Greek gods. They are a mob family. <laughs> <laughs> they absolutely are. Okay, cool. In that case, then, the journey is utterly uneventful. How long is it? It is... In minutes? Maybe six hours. Oh, okay. Cell is only a dolphin for the first sort of nine minutes of that. Here's the thing. You can just take a rest and then, you know, go again a couple of times if you want to burn all of your uh, slots on. Not all, not all of them. Not all of them. They're having fun, but they're not... They're not a crazy person. You all, you see, I'm so proud of you all. You all gotten so cautious and like, would you like to have fun? And you're all like, only if it spends no precious rest or resources. <laughs> well, you know what? If if Sal is a dolphin and having fun, can we do like some kind of game where like Azu holds out her arm and Sal tries to jump over it? Absolutely. I think that would, I think that would be nice. <laughs> I am going to jump ahead to coming into port. Okay. <laughs> In which case, then coming into port. Port is a very strong word. There is a dock. There are some buildings. This constitute the port. It is not a large area. It is a provincial little side port. And it is basically for... It's a fishing village, to all intents and purposes. Uh, Hey, folks, while we're here... I mean, it was many years ago that I was last here because, of course, you know, the world situation as it was. But there was a restaurant here. It was called the the Soggy Fisherman, uh, which I I think we should absolutely (laughs) look up if we if we have a moment. I mean, I don't know if how it's it's been it's been a lot of years. Oh, and humans don't live that long. Um hmm. there's no harm in in checking and you know, businesses get passed down. True. Wild suggests that you all maybe actually go to the place whilst he makes sure that all of the horses and equipment are ready for you. But he knew that you were going to have a bit of a time between anyway. So, yeah, if you want to go uh, eat at the uh Soggy fisherman. Absolutely. Actually, thinking about it, it's probably only been about three, four years. Cell so just gets mixed up with time. <laughs> In which case, then, does everyone wish to go to the soggy fisherman? Yes or no? Yeah, sure. Yes. So the soggy fisherman is a very down at heel looking place. It is weather beaten to the point of like being problematic. There are broken planks and everything. It looks from the outside to be a little bit of a mess. However, the second that you're inside, it is quite cozy, it's warm, and the food smells incredible. Absolutely incredible. And I'm going to say that you all have probably the best meal you've had in ages. Mm. Obviously, it is going to be primarily fish and uh, seafood and so on. However... Also rude, since I've been cooking. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry. In fairness, you did do... I distinctly remember you doing a couple of decent, like, cook checks, didn't you? You got a natural 20 on one of them, I think. You did a really yeah. good breakfast. Yes, that was it. I'm, I'm sorry, but at the same time, prof- professional chef who's been doing it for 40 years, <laughs> who hasn't had customers in a long time. They got player levels? <laughs> didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm desperately scanning through my brain in the Pathfinder ones. I think they could have a level in Aristocrat because that includes high-level business. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think they're the ones doing the cooking at that point. A little bit. So, yeah, it, it, you are treated really, really well. It's not problematic or anything. It's just over the course of it, it becomes clear they've not had much business. The storms have meant that things have been kind of hard. And as a result, they are pulling out all the stops because it's been a while since they've been able to fuss over people. Aww. So there's a lot of... Is, is it a sushi restaurant? Are they serving a sushi? Absolutely. Hamid loves it. Hamid is so excited by sushi. He's never had it before. And he is like, oh my God, this is the greatest thing. They have a specialty of, uh, yeah, basically tropical fish is a major specialty of theirs. But yeah, you also notice that they have effectively fish tanks in the, in the building itself. But yeah. I'm going to skip past this meal. It's an interesting restaurant. Hamid overpays it to quite an embarrassing extent. <laughs> the chef recognises you are doing so and humbly accepts it because times <laughs> have been hard. Uh, I would say then that we jump ahead to reconvening outside the village squares, a push, empty dirt yard near a warehouse where there are a number of horses and a cart waiting. Barnes and Carter are already upon their horses, Wiles upon his. The cart seems to be intended for the kobolds who who hop up as well. And you each have a horse. Obviously, there is a Shetland for Hamid and a, another Shetland for Zolf. Sell. Out of curiosity, this might not be a thing that I can do. Do you have knowledge local at all? 
No, I don't have ranks in it. Okay, fair enough. I'm going to have to just give you some generic stuff of... Cell, you know for a fact that Japan as an area... I've got a lot of history. Yeah, yeah, give me knowledge history, that'd do it. But this is only specifically for Cell, I'm afraid. 26. Yeah, that'll do it. So, historically, Japan has been a gnome-heavy area for a long time. It's a centre for sort of Magitech and so on. And additionally, as a result, one of the things that you'll notice as you start heading through the countryside is it heavily caters towards smaller humanoids. A lot of things where it's like, if you're going past a house that has steps, it also has a set of steps at smaller distances to make it easier to get up. Things like there are banisters at lower levels and things like that. And as you start setting off through the countryside, it, it becomes apparent to the others as well. But just for Cell's benefit, it's because the known population's very high, probably highest in the world for, like, human settled lands, if you see what I mean. But as a result, yeah, there is a heavy catering towards smaller people in the environment. And there are entire herds of Shetland ponies to cater to this set of needs as well. But night starts to sort of draw in, but Wild seems intent on trying to minimise the time and pushing on and maybe camping on the road rather than waiting at the village, if everyone's okay with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. In that case, then, it is going to be a few days of journey. I don't have a major shocking revelation to drop on you during these few days. He's just (laughs) saying that, so it's more shocking. (laughs) It's a very me move. We're in a weird new world order where downtime's on the cards. I'm struggling, but I'm getting there. Does anyone have anything that they want to cover on the RP side? It is going to be a few days of just travelling through what is effectively rural countryside along roads, but not like key roads or anything. You're heading down sort of back roads a little bit deliberately. The weather will remain good and the area is primarily farmland and maybe some woodland as well here and there. Hamid probably finishes his sewing project, which he's been, you know, sneaking a couple of hours in on in, in, in the evenings in his tent and then we'll present it to Azu. Oh, uh, Azu, I, um, I, I made you something. Oh, <laughs> he hands you what you for a while thought was maybe the covering for the cart that no one was <laughs> using. Because <laughs> it's huge. Azu sort of picks it up and turns around and is like, what, what well, is we're, it? We're, we're headed to, to, you know, to quite far north and just, you know, sometimes it, it, get, it gets really cold there and you know, we, we haven't really travelled to anywhere cold before, so I just, I thought I'd make you, like, um, you know, a, a nice warm coat. Oh, Hamid. I've, I've kind of run out of materials, but I really want to make them for everyone as well, but I, this is just the one I I, 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 I made first. Oh, well, I, I don't need one. I've, I've got my own stuff. Oh, okay, yeah, I mean, I can, I can, if, 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 if you don't want one, that's fine. I just, as soon as I get more materials, I was just going to make, because, but that, that, that's fine, of course. Yeah, I just, you know, I, I haven't been to the the, the north before, and I, I don't think Azu has either. I sell it. I don't know if you've got any sort of cold cold weather stuff, or I, I, I could make you one uh, as well. No, I actually, uh, I mean, sometimes it gets quite cold on the, in the ocean sometimes, and I, I yeah, the, the occasional, you know, the, the odd mountain, but I've, n- I've never actually been that far north when I think about it. Not even that far south. That's, uh, I mean, quite quite far south but not that far not this far south and I well I just thought it would be ha- yeah. helpful to have some but I mean if, Zol- Zol- if you've already got some then obviously I won't you know uh, but I- if you wanted something new or anything I could I could ha- have a go um, but, but try it on Azu I want to see if it, it fits alright Azu eventually finds the armholes <laughs> <laughs> so it actually fits really well and it doesn't cost you any mobility or anything like that. It's just he made a coat that goes over armour. Like, the problem is in the conception, not the execution. That's the best way to describe it. <laughs> she wears it anyway and she puts the hood up and she does a big grin and she says, thank you very much. And then she picks Hamid up to hug him. And I'm assuming that this coat is made of, like, fur or something. It's probably made of, like, three different furs cobbled together. You've done the best you can to turn it into, like, maybe, like, the lapels are one and the back's another or whatever. But you didn't quite have accurate, like, equal amounts, so you've had to work around it a little bit. Well, that's fine. It just means it's a very warm and snuggly hug. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, very warm. Very, very warm. Like, 
really warm. You are in a almost <laughs> tropical environment warm. Ezzy, you look amazing. <laughs> she still wears it for as long as possible. <laughs> as soon as we get more, I'm gonna I'm gonna work on making one for my, myself and, and, oh, and one for Sal. I, yeah, I would that, be so grateful, be Hamid. Ezzy um, looks incredible. You should be very proud. Oh, thank you, thank you. Carter pipes up. Can I have one? Yeah, of course. I mean, anyone anyone who needs one. How are you at pockets? Um, yeah, pretty pretty good, I think. Wicked. There's, there's a couple on there's a couple on that one. If you if you have a look, Azu. As it demonstrates, <laughs> as if she's on a catwalk, she turns to one side, she turns to the other. I mean, it's just a, just a question of materials. I can, it, it, I'm not very quick, but I can make as as many as we want, really. So, so yeah, okay. So one for sale, one for me, and and one for you. And you, you sure you sure you don't want one, Zolf? I mean, I. Well, it sounds like you're covered. It sounds like yeah, I've already got a perfectly good. I mean, yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. If you change your mind, I'm happy to share. Uh, I, I think that would be a bit bit big for me, so I'd probably. <laughs> Share it. <laughs> It'd make a serviceable tent, though. Well, it could be repurposed. But then you wouldn't have it. <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> if anything went wrong, I'm happy to share any of my supplies with you. So, <laughs> no, no, noted. <laughs> the name Zolf Smith, conversation killer. <laughs> License to awkward. Oh, I should probably make sweaters for the kobolds as well. I don't want them getting I am going either. to accelerate time. <laughs> Two, as you continue, you keep drawing more and more stares from what are basically rural farm folk going... Is it a circus? It looks like a circus. It must be a circus. Ooh. But as you start approaching, it starts getting a little bit more developed and starts converting from field to slightly more developed, sort of, it has more of a town vibe. You crest a low-ish slope and then you see laid out before you Hiroshima. It is an odd-looking city. It is, if you took high, high art, like cathedral architecture, sweeping domes, huge, like, balustrades and things like that, and then smashed it into, like, a factory setting insofar as there is a monorail. All of the buildings seem very old and very artistic and very high culture, but everything in between it is pushing the tech side. Again, you're looking at lots of horseless carriages and so on, which seem to be running, which given that you took out the Mr. Ceiling stuff is unusual. Effectively, it is as if someone industrialized Vatican City. Okay. It's a, it's a weird one. And on that weird note, I think I'm gonna end the episode there before we head into the city proper. Cool. Okay. How are we feeling? We all okay? Yeah. That was too relaxing, Alex. Yeah, I don't trust you and I don't trust this. <laughs> You're making us nervous. Yeah. That is the mm, plan, so I'm waiting. glad. In that case then, oh, yeah, I'm going to wrap it up there. I'm looking forward to doing the next recording where something might happen other than making a coat, but who knows? Mm. It was a very lovely coat. <laughs> I think making a coat is pretty exciting. <laughs> Good bonding moment. <laughs> mm, yeah. You know what? I'm going to call it there. Look after yourselves and uh, we'll be with you all next week. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Rusty Quill Gaming is a podcast distributed by Rusty Quill and licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution non-commercial sharealike 4.0 international license. Today's episode was directed by Alexander J. Newell and produced by April Sumner. To subscribe, buy merchandise, or join our Patreon, visit rustyquill.com. Rate and review us online, tweet us at the Rusty Quill, visit us on Facebook, or email us via mail at rustyquill.com. Join our community on the Discord via the website or on Reddit at r slash rustyquill. Thanks for listening. Hi everyone, Alex here. I'd just like to take a moment to thank some of our patrons. L. Lunovic, Clay Cameron, Crisp Dreamer, Robert Hubert, Zoe Depore, Lindy McClusing It, Mariah Day, Shay Topaz, Ida Karoliusen, Patrick Lusk, Frude, Bella Choi, Daniela, Jonathan, Lauren Smithwick, Gil, Taro, Desiree Certain, Maggie Benson, Mundetiam, Ruth Harris, Abel Strictly, Neely, Chiara Di Filippo, Bo, Molly Bushby Medlin, B. Murray, Van Bedard, Harrison Regan, Space Ghosts, M. Whalen, Seven Goblins in a Trench Coat, Ishebzo, 
Kia Benedict, Destiny Rivers, Danny Urbina, Lair, Nick Gilbert, PJ Bradley, Cinderane, Elliot Bonetto, Amanda Boltz, Monica, Reese Whittemore, Levy, Cliff, Sarah Bench, Ellen McLaughlin, Circa, Lee, Ali, and Jakara. Thank you all. We really appreciate your support. If you'd like to join them, go to www.patreon.com forward slash rustyquill and take a look at our rewards.